to big kids, all the adults, you can get your pencils on the way out. Don't forget them so that you can color in. And this is something we're going to be using throughout this year ahead as we enter into this new emphasis on equipping the next generation. We're going to be coming back to this theme over the next nine months, especially here of the school year. And we'll have a couple more of these bookmarks like this. that will have uh, another logo on the front and some image that you can color and some other things to help guide us as we are growing in our faith and showing that faith to others. And uh, keep your colored pencils because then you'll be able to color these in through the year. And maybe you want to use this even on the bulletins each week. If you grab a bulletin, you'll note on the back of the bulletin each week, there is a black and white image, something like this, that you can color in. It shares the theme for the day. And sometimes that act of coloring can help your brain concentrate on what the message is. So use those if you'd like to do so. But speaking of this logo, the Equipping the Next Generation logo that we have up here on the screen, it really is a very good lesson of what's going on in our gospel reading today. As I was just discussing with the children, that image has those uh, figures in there, including the children, and how valuable they are in the kingdom of God. Jesus says in our gospel lesson from Matthew 18, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's not great if you are so full of yourself that you think, look at me, look at me, I'm the best. That's awful. Instead, it's I'm nothing, it's all about Jesus. That kind of humble faith, as little children often express that Jesus, he's the answer. That's how we should all be. And we want to emulate that ourselves. And we are all to then welcome the children in our midst and bring them up in the faith of the Lord. As Jesus warns us here, whoever receives one such child receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, we better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck, be drowned in the depths of the sea pretty harsh warning from Jesus saying do not push these children away from me if you do anything by word or example to lead them away from me it'd be better for you to be in hell already because my punishment will be against you if you lead the little ones away from me it's a pretty strict warning we need to take that pretty seriously here that's why we are focusing on this theme that we are this year of equipping the next generation not to push them away but to welcome them and give them god's gifts that prepare them for eternal life starting here and now in this life all of us are to be disciples who first of all can learn our lesson from those children in that logo um as i said the children are moving toward the cross but we have the adults there kind of taking the lead the bigger figures to set an example to lead those children to Christ. But those children are the ones who often show us how it works, simply trusting in Jesus. I love this time of year as preschool starts off. This week I was greeting all of our new children to our preschool program, and they come in with eager excitement, and they're thrilled. And to learn about Jesus in Jesus' time is one of their highlights always. Uh, pretty soon we'll be having our chapel services where they come in here, and I get to talk to them. They love it. They come with big, wide eyes, eager to hear about Jesus and his love for them. That is such a good lesson for all of us to keep throughout our lives, that eager excitement, that wide-eyed excitement of knowing Jesus and his love for us, that it's never something we should get tired of or should grow old, but always have that eagerness to keep moving toward him, to be humble like a child going towards Jesus and receiving his forgiveness that he earned for us, even like a little baby crawling toward the cross. We should be that same way. Here I am crawling to you, Jesus, because I can't even walk today. I'm so filled with worry and fear and all the troubles of life, and yet you still love me. And so it's to you that I go. And that care that Jesus has for us that we are to learn from the children who simply care for one another without thinking. Oftentimes I'll watch these children. They'll come in and they're eager to help, help the teacher clean up the room or put their toys away when it's time. They actually do it pretty well at the start of the year. Um, it's time to do that. Okay, we'll follow the example and um, to see them learning how to, to do that, to cooperate, to help out. We should all have that kind of helpful spirit. It's eager to serve and to care. 
and to welcome others in care. That's an important part of this care. It's non-discriminating. I love that in the children also as I watch them. They don't see skin color or class level or um, knowledge base or um, financial well-being. Those things don't matter to them. It's, hey, you want to play? Sure, let's play. And they just go and play together like we're just the same. And we are under Christ's grace. Too bad we grow old and we start to discriminate on things that we see in others. And we start to have these rules of who I will associate with and who I will not. Who's good enough or who's not good enough. And we look at all those other factors that get in the way. We need to humble ourselves and get back to that kind of caring spirit that the children have without judgment. And to treat each other that way, all of us, especially anyone who walks in these doors of this faith building that we're covering with God's love, and to reach out to them with open arms like these hands at the bottom of this logo, welcoming them into this fellowship together with us. We also learn from the children the power of free forgiveness. As I watch the children, there is conflict along the way. Sometimes one will grab the cool-looking little dinosaur and play with it, and the other one, I had it first. No, I had it first. And then there's a tussle over it, and even sometimes some pushing and, and shoving and some crying and tears. And it's then that there's some intervention, sometimes necessary, to calm them down, remind them, no, we play nice, and we, we can share these things and to teach them how to do that. But what's always wonderful to see is Oftentimes, after that little tussle and the, just this horrendous trouble between them, they're told to forgive one another, and I'm sorry, please forgive me, and then they forgive, and yes, I forgive you. And you know, look at them 10 minutes later, guess what they're doing? Playing like nothing happened, smiling and having a grand time, because they forgive and forget and move on. Why can't we do that as we get older? Instead, we harbor this bitterness, and I'll get them for that. I'll forgive them, but I won't forget it. I'll make them pay. Oh, that person may have cheated me once, maybe twice, but never again. I'll get them. We need to learn that lesson from the children there, too. A forgiving love as Christ reaches out with forgiveness to all. That's another important lesson we learn from the children. As we are being equipped for life under the cross. And the joy that comes with that. These are all important lessons for us to remember as we consider today's gospel reading as we live under the cross of Jesus in this logo. But now on to that second part of the importance for us as adults who've learned our lessons to watch out for the little ones who are vulnerable in a broken world. Because so many of these little ones have adults around them who are not a good example who are leading them away from Jesus and into that temptation that will destroy them. And they're the ones that gets Jesus so riled up today in our gospel lesson. Woe to anyone who causes one of these little ones to fall into temptation. Woe to them. Be better to have a millstone, a huge rock tied around your neck and thrown in the sea than to lead one of these astray because you'll have to pay with me at the end of your days if you do that kind of thing. And that'll be worse than even getting drowned in the sea, to be cast into the fire of hell itself. That's a warning for you and me that we dare not ever do anything that will lead little children away from Christ, but do everything we can to lead them to him. And that means walking toward the cross always and going there toward his word of truth always. Do children ever see us sitting at home and watching TV instead of going to church on a Sunday morning? Do children ever see us driving off to some other activity instead of to church on Sunday morning? Do they ever see us driving them to that sport event because it's so important that it takes us away from the church on Sunday morning? These are things to ponder. What lesson do we teach when we drive anywhere other than to the cross of Jesus on Sunday morning or at any time in life. To remember, what are we teaching these eyes that are watching, these ears that are listening, by every action we perform? Very important. 
I've even heard some say, well, I don't have children anymore. I'm older, and I don't have any kids in my household, so this whole covering the next generation thing doesn't apply to me, or equipping the next generation, that ah, doesn't matter to me. I'm not doing that. Woe to you if you say such a thing, because they're watching you, every one of you. And even the older members of this faith family, every little eye in this place watches you, believe it or not. And the way you treat each other and the way you love each other or don't love each other. Or if they see you, they're driving to church with mom and dad, and they see you, oh, there's so-and-so out on the golf course. Hmm, wonder if they went to the other service or not. They are watching. And if you ever say, I don't have a job in that, wrong. And Jesus is very adamant about that. Because basically what you're saying is, they're not mine, so if they go to hell, so what? Really, that's what you're saying. They're not in my household, so why do I care? How awful. The word that I think of when I think of such an attitude is egregious. I looked it up again yesterday because I just love that word. Egregious. It's got that onomatopoetic sound to it. It's awful. And it says outstandingly bad, shocking, because it's such a terrible attitude. If you have an attitude that I'm not responsible for those other kids out there, and I'm not just talking our kids in here, but those kids out there, like right over there in the school system that's right at our doorstep. To think that it's okay if they end up in hell because they're not mine. Egregious. We need to love them and welcome them and do everything we can to draw them to Christ, to set an example ourselves and to speak of Christ and his love everywhere we go in all that we do and to point them to Jesus. You may say, oh, they don't want to hear it or they're going to fight against it. Yes, they will. Do children always want what's good for them? Do they love their spinach? No. But we get them what's good because we love them. And especially equipping them to know Jesus and his salvation. And so we take this very seriously. Including that last part of uh, Matthew 28. Where he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I've commanded you. Making sure these little ones come to be baptized and remember their baptism. And when you see our little ones go up and put their hand in the water and make the cross, praise God for that and join them in doing so. Yeah, that's a good reminder. I'm baptized. And when you see those children, to welcome them with love and smile at them and say, I'm so glad you're here. Even when you're having a bad day and you just want to cry and disrupt the service, you're not hurting my feelings. You're learning to be here. Praise God for that. And so we welcome all. We lead the children to Christ. And we set an example by being here in the divine service ourselves. You never know what little eyes watching you. And plus you need it yourself too. And we also come into the word of God. And come into Bible study instead of, oh, I got to get to breakfast. I'm out the door. Why can't you spend one more hour out of your week to be around the word of God? You may say, well, I've seen that before. Have those children around you seen it? Do they know you've seen it before? Even if nothing else, you're just showing that example. If this is important, you should be going to Sunday school just like I am. That's worth it. To set that example of being in God's word. As 2 Timothy 3 says, All scriptures breathed out by God is profitable for teaching, reproofing, correcting, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. What is it that equips the next generation? God's word, his truth. Where do we get that word? We hear it preached in this place. We hear it taught in the home around the family altar like we see in that logo. We see it lived out in the lives of people like you and me who are showing that example where we go because we know the love of Christ. We're eager to show that love of Christ always. I'm not saying this to be a burden and a downer for you, I'm saying it to be a joyful excitement for your future. I've got a purpose. I get to live forgiven. I know Christ is my Savior. I know I'm going to be under him for eternity. And I get to share it with others and be an example to the children around me wherever they go. God, give me the joy to do that every day. And to welcome every little child that crosses my path with a smile and love. Even the hooligan hanging out at McDonald's. They're a child of God waiting to happen ready to receive his gifts. Let's all reach out to every single one of them everywhere we go, every day, and equip them for life in Christ. Let us be bold 
in equipping the next generation with all that we can, with our gifts to support our capital campaign, yes, but more importantly, with my daily attitude and living, walking toward the cross, passing on the importance of Christ, and equipping the next generation. Amen.